Hi, welcome back to another review on the Mighty Max Doom Zone series. In the 1990s, there was a big feud between two video game giants, Nintendo and Sega. It was pretty much the 16-bit war, Super NES vs. the Mega Drive. <laughs> Good old days. And the Mighty Max franchise capitalized on this whole video game thing, with the release of Cyber Skull. Yeah, this set delves into the darker side of technology. And I don't mean rage quits. Yeah, let's check it out. Officially called Mighty Max Bites Cyber Skull. So we have a human skull that's been intertwined with cybernetics. It really has a good blend of sci-fi and horror. You pull up the visor and you can see all the delicate surgery. <laughs> to open it up, pull its robotic jaw, then open the skull. Remove the green earpiece and pull up the power drive platform. Now the whole interior looks like the insides of a video game cartridge, combined with some weird sci-fi stuff on the top. We only have two characters here. We got Max, and the villain is Cyberskull. He comes in the form of a green android. A very simple design that fits well with the sci-fi setting. And as for the set itself, it's pretty robotic. You've got the colors of gray and white, which gives it this cold cybernetic atmosphere. You've got the mechanical jaw. And here is a weird laser gun. Another addition to the set is the virtual vehicle. It has a weird sci-fi look to it. You can pull out the green arrow, and it can be used to ram stuff. Now as for the upper part, we have an eggshell colored wall with some computer circuits connecting to the cyber brain, which happens to be green. Some interesting detail on the sticker below. It indicates that the liquid tube has been smashed. And here are some nuts and bolts. And as you can see, all the wires feed to the central brain. Anyway, the set really goes high tech with its visual. And as for its official comic strip, it really hits the realms of virtual reality. It starts with Max playing a video game created by the Megacorp company. Megacorp being the equivalency of Cyberdyne, or OCP. Anyway, Max is finding it to be a challenging game. Suddenly, Cyberskull teleports to Earth in digital form and begins to take over the city, digitizing it with his bizarre technology. So Max has to stop him, and by doing so, he gets himself teleported into the game. In the battle, Max pulverizes the cyber brain, destroying the whole computer, scrambling its circuits. Max then teleports back to the real world, and the world is saved once again. Now there were a few cartoon episodes based on this called Cyberskull Virus and Cyberskull Next Level. Plot wise, it's pretty much a larger scale version of the comic strip. And yeah, in the 80s and 90s there were a lot of films and TV shows focusing on technology taking control of humanity and all those digital realms. These episodes are kind of like Terminator colliding with Tron. So that means you get a lot of action and unique animation. Now to close the set, close down the power platform. Max stands here, Cyberskull stands here, and the virtual vehicle gets stored here. Lift the jaw, close the skull, and pull the jaw down, blocking it up. Yep. You can safely say that the Cyber Skull is one of the most technical ones in the series. Yeah, it's a good reference to a lot of those games of the 16-bit era. <laughs> and in regards to gaming, make sure you play in moderation. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you in the next one.